Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Royal Dark Knights Haven and today I'm gonna talk about the issues that I've been facing with Division 2. So let's get to the very basic issue that uh, has been bothering players all around and that's the blue screens. The blue screen plague has been going on all around regardless of what activity we've been doing and it's been seen mostly in raids and uh, the real reason for it, for it to be popping out, I don't know which error code or which bug it is, but when we pulse or we use a pulse while playing on the PlayStation at least, because that's my primary console. So while playing on the PlayStation when in a raid, either be the dark covers or the iron horse, when we use the pulse, immediately we lose three players or more or sometimes less but there is always two to four players loss that happens when we pulse to blue screens just why is that happening and how long is it going to happen for it's not like it's been happening like for a week or two but it's been there for long now it's been there for at least a month that i can recall of that i personally experienced it because we as a group never usually run the pulse so I haven't experienced it earlier, I don't know when it started, but for the past couple of weeks, or uh, for the past couple of weeks, I have been uh, a victim of this when I joined uh, some random groups to help them out with their raids, and that's a problem that I've come across. There's also been a problem uh, with the legendaries, uh, where in some cases, mostly with the mission distributing arena, where people, when trying to place their turrets out, they have had blue screens. How is that possible? Placing skills is leading to blue screens is not good. How can activating a skill and placing it out like a pulse or a turret is leading to blue screens? It's not good for the game. I mean, if, if this was something like a damage glitch, it would have been patched up immediately. Then why isn't this being fixed? Only the developers know. Further going on into the skills, <laughs> there are skill glitches, like uh, more like the skill glitch is out and it shows that you have a skill but you can't use it, you can't change it, you can't even change your build. The only viable option left for it is to log out and log back in. The same thing happens when, uh, the, when you're stuck with your skill on an infinite loop. It still happens in some cases and I don't know under which specific uh, uh, scenario it occurs but it does happen even now. And there is another thing uh, that's been bothering me with using skills and that's the chem launcher. As soon as I activate my chem launcher, be it fire starter or the foam, uh, it shows me the trajectory to shoot. And as soon as I shoot it, it shows that the ammo has been consumed, but there is no effect. There is no gas coming out for the fire starter. There is no chem on anyone. I mean, uh, the foam on anyone. It's not like uh, there is really the chem came out and it spread out and we can't see it. It's never. It's not like that. The thing is, it never appeared. Even the uh, graphic or the animation never came into existence but the ammos are getting consumed i have had this uh, happen to me in uh, legendaries i have had this happen to me while doing the raids it has happened in normal open world activities so i don't know how is this happening but it is now going further let's talk about the issues with the biggest thing in the game right now that people are uh, putting themselves into and that's the raid with the raid people have found odd ways of running it on a speed runs and there are some of the people that i came across who tend to kill themselves as soon as they kill the first boss and the second boss it's like they don't have to deal with npcs because as soon as you kill the first boss, if you kill yourself, you don't even have to pick up the fuses to put them into the generators to open the train path to go into the second boss area. You just kill yourself and the train automatically opens itself. So why are activities that, uh, what do you say, break the common chain of the mission being allowed to exist in the game? That's my question. Why are they allowed? There is also another... Uh, 
a technique which uh, is more based on the luck it's where people when they are uh, i mean this is what i experienced on playstation so i'm just talking in that that perspective so people lock themselves out uh, log out of the character and log back in with the second character let's say it ha- uh, for me on personal basis it happened on the fourth uh, boss before we opened the shutter some of our people and even i we log i logged out to save the checkpoint on the final boss and what we did was we went to a second character and came back in when because we were using ssds we logged back in before the game could kick us out so what that did was it stopped the clock it stopped the clock from going up and it freezed it at around uh, 40 odd minutes i don't perfectly remember the number but it around 40 odd minutes it stopped the clock from moving and once we entered the shutter uh, open the shutter and went into the f- final boss area and we did the com- we completed the whole mission the timer was still the same and it counted on the leaderboards still the same so there is a way i don't know how exactly but it's related to logging in and logging out and when this happens the time freezes and the speed runs can be cheated on the leaderboards can be manipulated so that's also a thing and there is also another issue that i faced and that would be the uh fact that when the time was fixed or more like stopped and we ended up wiping on the final boss uh during that time one of our other guys got blue screen before we wiped so he went out and when he logged back in he was at the beach and we were seven in the fourth boss arena and when we wiped it showed and it counted it as activity completed and mission completed it gave us the raid loot it gave us an uh, com- raid completion and we didn't finish the boss we just ended up wiping it over there but a completion was counted and we were it uh, we were rewarded with loot so how did that happen why did that even happen it's not like we are planning to break the game these random events just pointed out there are these kind of bugs still in the raid going on forward there is another technique that the players use for a speed run to buy it by themselves a few seconds and that is reloading the raid when they are when they are at the beach they reload the raid and as soon as they reset the raid they go to the door and as, as soon as the guy presses the button to open it and when the gate is like midway they reset it again and what that does is it makes the gate invisible or like it uh takes the gate out of the question it it shows as though the gate has already been open and when the reset's done you just run into it there is no gate that's blocking your path and the last person coming in would just stop over there and press the square button because it still shows that there's a shutter there to be opened but it's not blocking anyone's path but as soon as you press the square button to open the shutter the npc spawn so it gives time for the player to adjust himself sometimes dropping in and or uh, sometimes they don't drop in so that on the team that finishes it so that's there and there should be a solution for the blue screens and uh, the hindrances it causes i mean if it's a blue screen that caused because of a game error that the member who has uh, got kicked out should have had uh, the ability to come back into the mission rather than staying on to the beach i mean if he got out of the mission let's say he voluntarily got out of the mission because he was killed that means when he comes back in he should be dead like usually that happens in legendaries right so why isn't that method followed in the raids if i log back in uh, and i was kicked out because of a uh, game error i shouldn't be left standing out on the beach making my team suffer when we are doing speed runs or stuff like that it would be better if i could go in directly because it's not my fault from stopping or uh, stopping the game or, or causing an issue that caused an error that's not player related it's more game and console related so just give me an opinion on that uh, and if you agree to it just leave a like and going forward with the new york 
I would say when the Warlords of New York came out, we were so excited for the things that were going to happen and the story going forward. But as the time went along, New York is something that I rarely visit. I don't even like to go there to farm for any loot. Sometimes I go there just for the sake of getting some change. But I would rather prefer to stay in Washington rather than going to New York. And the reason for that is the open world and the missions. The open world has too many uh, NPC battles going on between different factions or random NPC spawns from, uh, let's say, any door that you're walk running across and they might spawn within 10 to 15 meters of uh, where you're running and you're automatically in the combat. In a sense where you're not prepared and it always leaves you or throws you into a combat that you're not prepared for and it's not fun always to be in such kind of a situation and the reason that I'm specifying, specifying this out is because we usually do bounties and we do when we do uh, bounties on like challenging or heroic what happens is you have two to three different areas where you have to travel to while completing all these activities and killing the bosses so in between those areas you what i experience is i end up have to fight at least two or three different npc battles i have to fight those battles really off just so that i can get to the next area and it's frustrating every time because my open world is heroic but i'll that particular period of time i would have been doing a hard bounty i would have been doing a challenging bounty but i've been forced to work so hard to get over there and then in most of the cases, as you know, the NPC damage output is way too much to even handle sometimes. And being it as an uh, heroic world, and I usually run with heroic and all five directives on. So you can assume all of a sudden when I'm thrown into battle, when I, which is not planned for, while trying to do something else, it always ends up negative. The missions are not appealing they are just uh, lengthily boring in a sense it's not like uh, the reward is also better because uh, before we've got exotics from the game so we thought it was good to farm these missions but now that the exotics are not even uh, what do you say worth it in in perfect sense to be said the exotics are not really worth it in this game because the exotics as per the developers quotes they are just there to provide build diversity the exotics are not the power powerful weapons in the world or even the powerful gear they are just there to provide so called diversity which in actual truth is non existent you either find full red builds or full skill builds and in some cases a complete shield build uh, which could be comprising of uh, maybe a one or two skills uh, i mean uh, skill tier uh, gears in there but other than that, people mostly don't run mixed builds. So build diversity was crushed long back because of the NPC brutality that's there in that's existent in this game. The NPCs not only hit hard, but they are tanky. And in some cases, there's this uh, random bug that appears where your bullets are hitting the enemies, but damage registration doesn't happen. And if you guys uh, have experienced it, you would perfectly know what I'm talking about. There may be cases where some people haven't come across it. Maybe you're not playing it as much as we did, but it does appear. It does happen. And it's not only me that's been saying about this. It's my clanmates, the teams that I play with, the randoms that I've been in connection with. It always been happening or occurring. And I would like to complete my final point on New York with the last mission or the final mission of Warlords of New York and that's the Aaron Keener mission that there is. That mission is so boring that I haven't even finished it the 10 times to complete and get the commendation since I'm a commendation enthusiast and I haven't been there. I haven't finished that mission 10 times. It's just too boring to even be bothered to go over there and finish it. Well, going forward, we have the new issues that's been there and some old issues that's all been there in the PvP or the DZ. So, 
in the pvp section uh, right now the builds have become so mad meta based it's only one or two builds that you just see nearly everywhere with random odd builds that are diverse from those meta builds right now it's only lady death running with the complete dps slash hazard builds or lady death with the tank build kind of a thing it is too boring to be even involved in DZ, DZ or the PvP. I mean, it's not like we can't take these guys down. It's just that when you do this repeatedly with the same kind of shit, it gets too boring. There is not much build diversity when it comes to the player base. I don't know if it's just uh, a coincidence or is it just the people have no sense of creation within themselves. They have no creativity. I, I don't know what their problem is but they just see a video online of a build and then mentally copy it so much it just infuriates me to a point that is there no creativity left in the game where you can change your builds and still be able to do what you need to do going forward we have an odd dps glitch that has now occurred in pvp sessions either in DZ or in PvP. I don't know how this DPS glitch is done or under what conditions it occurs. But I have come to hear about it uh, because I heard about it from Epic Slayers and Born to Game and the content and the videos that they have shown uh, prove that it does exist. But how it exists or how it gets uh, created or how the glitch gets activated is still unknown. Now let's talk seriously about the Dark Zone. Dark Zone was the place where you used to get good quality loot. Always good quality loot. It made sense to go into the DZ to, to fare and go into the DZ to put that pressure on yourself to be always alert for a random PvP combat that might occur and surprise you out of it. It mattered because there was loot that was worth it. But right now, the loot in DZ is worthless. The drops in DZ are nearly worthless. I mean, there are named items in DZ, but the drop rate for the named items in DZ, even with targeted loot on, is very low. And the stats that they come out with are so bad that even if you see that it's a named item and you are so in, uh, puffed up, within yourself thinking yep thank god at last i got it you go to it you check it and your stats on it are terrible sometimes you have a red primary with uh, uh, two blues or two yellows on them and sometimes it's a rainbow sometimes uh, the stats don't even cross 50 percent on it so you, you understand what i'm talking about so it frustrates me beyond point when I mean, that happens and it's not like it's a case of a single day or a two. I have been farming for a particular backpack. I have lost the name of that backpack, but it's a Providence backpack where you get perfect vigilance. I've been farming everywhere for that backpack. And whenever it dropped, it dropped with shitty, shitty rolls. And it was not worth my time to even uh, think about picking it up or breaking it down. It was literally trash. I could just kick the game out. That It's that infuriating when I see that happening. And in such way, it's not like I have been only farming for a day or two, right? I've been farming for it for months. And when I farm, I farm for a session of five hours or more. It's not like an hour's farm per day. When I start farming, I farm for eight hours or more. And since uh, with the pandemic that's going on for the last two to three months, I have been home for all most of the time and because of that I have spent at least 10 to 12 hours on this game every fucking day. So you can imagine the amount of farming I have been doing and the pieces that I am searching for but no, it's not worth it. Now that concludes my dark zone and PvP conditions with the game. Now let's get into the gaming condition or the state of the game that we are playing in. The game was supposed to have build diversity, but the mixed builds 
are non existent in the game now you can't survive with mixed builds on higher quality missions not in heroics legendaries none and the reason for this is you got to be either a complete tank to survive it you got to be a complete dps oriented player to be able to kill and go through or you got to be a complete skill player to be able to land your skill damage and either your motor turrets or whatever you're using there is nothing left where you are running three skills or three reds or three something or something and you there is nothing like a mixed build because that doesn't give you the output that you are desiring it doesn't do either the damage or it doesn't give you the survivability so you are always lacking the build diversity that the developers kept banging their chests about is non existent and the way that they have developed the game making the npcs the way they are right now makes build diversity impossible going further into this discussion let's check the leaderboards for the hardest content or sorry for the hardest content on the missions what's the hardest content on the missions it is heroics but the leaderboards are non existent what the fuck why is or why are the leaderboards non existent to us and why can't we compete with others and check our boards is it really necessary to be uh, checking our comparisons with other players on hard and challenging difficulties because those difficulties don't matter those difficulties are for the players who are new into the game and not for the players that have been since the launch of the game so the leaderboards have been turned irrelevant in a sense yeah uh, if you put on directives it's not like you're going to show show different on the leaderboard saying the number of people who completed these missions on these particular period of times so with these many number of directives are so and so that thing doesn't happen when you activate the directives it doesn't uh, necessarily give you any good loot the loot is still the same even though you activate your directives or not the directives are just there to give you xp boost and some variety in the game or more like more toughness onto you but let's be honest after a period of time that is when you reached the watch level ssd 1000 xp is no longer of any use gaining any more experience is of no more use once you reach level 1000 because you can't invest it anywhere that number that you get is of just for show off so the only reward for running directives is 25% xp boost per directive active and there is nothing else on it so what's the reward for pushing ourselves that hard nothing going further we have clans right we have clans in this game but the clans are not really clans in a sense that there are no clan activities there to be done i mean you have your so called clan leader board but that's just there to individually compete within the clan but in the longer sense there should be something to bind the clan together activities that you can only do with your clan members where is that there's nothing like that in the game there are no activities that are only or that can only be done if you do it with a clan member or with a group a four member group of a clan even such as those are the ones that truly bring about gameplay or together group gameplay but that's not existent so what is the vision for the game is something that i still can't see even after these many months from when the game has launched the exotic weapons and gears are just show piece items there are hardly a uh, few pieces here and there that are good like the wild mask for status effect builds or the gunslinger holster that could be used with your pistol builds for immense dps or short dps that you need the boost for 
or something like an eagle bear or a ravenous or a regulus pistol these are handful of exotics that are just here and there that are somewhat better useful but not the best the only relevant fun map or fun mission that we had recently was the manhunt mission of the first set where you completely revamped a few things within the mission of Roosevelt and that was fun it was fun to play that mission why can't we have manhunts I mean not only the final bosses but also the minor bosses connected to some mission with some or the other change rather than just giving them to us as bounties that looks like a lazy way of telling us like we don't give a shit And with the tanks in the build, uh, game, the heavies, I mean, why are they not affected by status effects? I mean, you can put them on uh, foam and on blind, but let's, let's be honest. You, we use fire, right? The fire starter, it doesn't affect him in any way. Uh, he just walks through it. He doesn't even bother about it. He just starts shoot, continues shooting at you. You put... A uh, foam one, with even on a six-piece uh, skill build, he still breaks through it like it was nothing. He just comes out of it and walks through and shoots you down. If you blind him, even that blind doesn't exist for long. I mean, is that tank some kind of a boss? It's like uh, tanks are like semi-final bosses or something, where nothing works on them. And with other heavies that are the normal machine gunner heavies, the purples, the elites, their weapon, their the, the LMG that they use is too freaking powerful. I mean, the amount of damage output from their LMGs is so much that if you get hit by less than 5 or 10 bullets, you are more likely to be dead or you have completely lost your armor. I mean... I can agree to this fact that they are that powerful when they mount up. But what about the fact that even when they are running through or walking along and they shoot you and they still do the same. I mean there should be some kind of a difference because you can't have him running that kind of a powerful weapon and just stand along and do damage rather than setting it up somewhere. Well, that's upon you to decide how you want to design the game but that doesn't work out in proper sense. Further going in, uh, while doing the legendaries, I came across this. I think this also exists in normal modes. Uh, on District Union Arena, after you defeat the two hounds, uh, when you climb up the stairs, you go into the next room, right? After you go into the room, uh, you can see in the mid part, there are crates that you can climb on and uh, get into cover on the wall there. But sometimes what happens is, after you get into the cover, when you move along the wall, you go and fall under the crates. I mean, why is that still existent? I kind of saw this earlier when the first legendaries came out and it's still going on even till date because I just experienced it yesterday. There are so many similar line of bugs that are there. Uh, there are some bugs that stop progression going into the next part of the mission where the, you, you got to open some door and when you press the button to open the door, the door opens up, but there's still an invisible wall there that prevents you from going to the next stage. That's still there. And I faced that mostly in New York. And uh, for the matter of fact, uh, the most fun that we as player base had was using the DPS glitch and it was not that we used the DPS glitch to go into the uh, PvP section and show that we are some kind of a boss or something because that's uh, bullshit. The reason that we used the PvP glitch uh, was just to experience having the feel of power on the hardest level content in the game that was uh, the legendaries at that period of time. We were playing legendaries then 
the NPCs could kill us even then with their bullets because the damage output from them was awesome. There was not like an armor glitch. So your armor was still the same. You could still die when you come out of cover for too long. But we had the DPS to kill them quick. That kind of gave us the fun and that's the reason why most of us exploited it when it came out. And you, you might have banned us or taken the things out but we are not bothered about it. But the experience that we had from the game for those little period or the little few days that we had that going on was a blessing because it felt refreshing and it, it felt like we had something better with us. In the same sense, let's just talk about the talents that are there. There are just a few talents that I never like in this game, but they are the ones that we always kind of end up using because we have no other choice. And the first one is the obvious intimidate what it does is if you have enemies that are within 10 meters of you it gives you weapon damage of 35 percent to the enemies that are within 10 meters but to be able to proc it you need to have bonus armor and if you're a solo player the only way that you can proc bonus armor is if you're if you have the exotic ravenous that gives you bonus armor or if you're running bloodsucker which is not a damage oriented talent on your backpack or if you're running leadership so what happens here or if you're running uh, sorry if or if you're running uh, let's say there's another one if i'm not wrong uh, bonus armor i think that's the protector yeah, and if you're running the protector. So what this does is it forces you to use talents on the backpack which are not aggressive but defensive talents or more like armor talents. So you're losing your DPS or damage from those talents. In return, you're getting 35% damage, right? And then you have the next talent that's famous all around and that's the glass can <laughs> or some people might run the named item called the sacrifice that's the perfect glass cannon so in this circumstances it says that you get either 25 to 30 percent damage boost but in return you get a debuff of receiving damage from any enemies where you get nearly 50 to 60 percent damage in exchange for the power that you have just received <laughs> how is this even useful to us i mean how in the sense is this going to make the agent powerful in the sense what i can see from the developer's point of view is that they don't want to give players damage from talents more than 30 35 percent at the max they want to lock us there at that limit if you want to go or venture beyond that point they are just telling us you have to go and sacrifice your own armor or your survivability in exchange to receive more damaging talents and more damage throughout and i can prove it to you on another point as well because there are other skills that are damage oriented as well there is focus but that only procs when you zoom in or when you scope in so it's not like you're gonna scope in every second and then there is gunslinger which only works for like five seconds and you have to keep changing your weapon to proc it and then you have overwatch where you only get 12 percent damage and then there is another one and that's spark that's maxed for 15. let's go to the counterpart and that's our backpacks and in the backpacks let's just go to just normal weapon damage and rather than skill damage and then you can see all through this there is vigilance now what vigilance does is it gives you 25 percent bonus damage i mean like not bonus damage but total damage but that disappears as soon as you receive any damage from any source whatsoever and, and again comes back in four seconds but it can disappear the very next second when you pop out to shoot so this one is just as good as non-existent in some circumstances unless you're running in a group where you can just go and be behind someone else and who's uh, when the guys in the front are taking damage and you can just shoot from the back 
in a group you might be able to use it but as a solo in most circumstances you will not be able to proc it in a gunfight so imagine using this one with perfect glass cannon or something so it says like 30% plus 25 so you are getting 55% bonus damage and in return you are losing 60% and even the vigilance will just disappear as soon as you receive damage. So that's 25% gone. And on top you are receiving 60% extra damage. It's useless. And then you have versatile. It's one of the complicated talents that there is. But it's a good talent to have. I mean, I know that the weapon damage is only for like 10 seconds. That it just procs. And it procs only once per 5 seconds that it there is but if used effectively this is a great uh, talent to be running going down further Agent in need you have opportunity stick which does only 10 percent and then you have unstoppable force <laughs> where you only get five percent stack per enemy killed for 15 seconds where you can go to max of 25 but you have to kill five enemies and after killing 5 enemies, you need to have another enemy to be able to kill with 25% stack. In most of the cases when you're playing solo, you don't end up fighting more than 5 to 6 enemies on a single uh, floor level unless it is the final fight or uh, one of the major checkpoints. And then you have Companion which is maxed at 15. You have Composure that's maxed at 15. And then there is Concussion but which is only allowed for headshots and it's only at a maximum of 10 percent i mean when you it only procs with your headshots it uh, max at 10 percent with uh, 15 percent in very random cases when you get a kill with your shots wicked is just for applying statuses and then there's nothing and sorry for forgetting about this talent the adrenaline rush it's also a talent that's used so that you can proc your intimidate so it's these are all defensive stats so my point is the devs have locked us in such a way that if you want to play safe the maximum that you can derive from weapon damage of talents is like 27 to 35 percent maximum from talents that don't disappear once you take damage or you get out of cover things. So that's their magic number. 35 is the max number that they want you to be. If you want to grow cross 35, that means you have to sacrifice something. And I just want to say that this is not how you uh, give power to your, to your agent. It's like telling us you can't use these skills just because you want to get more damage. There was a time in Division when we had two talents on backpacks and uh, chests and there was stuff like that. There was a time when there was diversity in the game and stuff. It, 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 people complained that the mission became missions became a bit simple. It needed a little bit of revamp but the revamp that it needed was let's say X. But the revamp that we got was 10X. So I just messed up the game from then and when from that point of view, uh, that point of time, we have been facing issues with the game which has just been getting worse and worse and worse with every update. Even with a small reset, the developers have the audacity to fuck up the small stuff. I think most of you know what happened after this Thursday, right? If you have guessed that I was going to talk about the clan leaderboards, then yep, you are right. They messed up the clan leaderboards after the recent reset. I mean, if they can mess up something as small as this, you can imagine how many other stuff throughout the game are getting continuously getting messed up. Well, I think I'll leave the video over here and it over here please leave a like if you do like the video and keep sharing the content if you do have anything to ask about or anything anymore to input please comment and uh, yeah subscribe to my channel thank you